I think for most people that are buying the Sony FX30, buying this audio handle at an extra $400 is a waste of money. And you would be much, much better off buying a standalone audio interface like the Zoom F3 recorder. Now I've got both of these, the Zoom F3 recorder and the audio handle, and I can tell you, on every level, from sort of functionality, from audio quality, from build quality, in every single way, the Zoom F3 is a better device for audio, and it costs only about 75% of what the audio handle costs. So I think if you aren't obsessed with actually having those audio tracks in your camera, and you're okay with having a standalone audio solution, a Zoom F3 or something similar to that is a better solution. So let me just go over what's going on with this audio handle, why I don't recommend it for most people, but at the end of the video, and I'll circle back and kind of talk about the people that it might actually work for. To start with, when you take this thing out of the box, you are going to be shocked at the build quality and not in a good way. This thing was so light when I took it out of the box, I wasn't even sure what the heck it was. I didn't know if it was the camera, it just was so light. Then I opened the bag and I took it out and I was presented with this very plasticky feeling, super lightweight audio handle. It doesn't even have a nice finish on the plastic like many of the plastic on some of the Sony cameras now. It, it truly just feels like cheap plastic. In addition to that, you've got these plastic flaps here and here, which sort of cover your different switches and dials. This helps you or stops you from bumping those things while you're actually shooting and using it. The problem with these flaps is they are so thin and flimsy and they have just the sort of smallest hinge on them. If you have these things out and you bump anything or you're using this in any environment that's getting some sort of robust use going in and out of a bag, these things are gonna break off. This handle is definitely not built to go on pro level shoots in situation where gear is coming in and out of bags and being thrown around a bit. So I think this really is a consumer grade audio handle from a build perspective. The other thing that I found is when you look at the buttons and dials on the side here, this is how you control all your levels and your audio functions. I found these dials very small, very fiddly, and very difficult to use. And I found the switches very difficult to actually switch to the right position because most of them have three or four different settings up and down. So I actually found myself using a pencil to get them in the position. So if you're out sort of running and gunning and you want to do something quick, I personally found it very, very hard to operate these buttons and dials. When I compare that to my Zoom F3, that thing is absolute cinch to operate. And because it's 32-bit float, it means I don't even have to set the levels. So I think setting the levels, controlling the gain, and doing everything on this is much, much more difficult than it would be in any dedicated audio recorder. Now, I think a lot of people are gonna buy the audio handle to put a shotgun microphone actually in the clamp for the audio handle and get that audio on top of the camera. Even if they're using other audio solutions in other areas or recording sort of lapel mics or high quality audio in different ways, boom arms, what have you. But what I found is to start with, most modern shotgun microphones are too thin to actually be clamped in the clamp. They just slide out. Now, you would have thought Sony would know this, so there would be some sort of off-the-shelf solution to actually shim that or hold that in. Now, the only thing I could find, and it wasn't even a Sony product, was this sort of rubber sleeve. And I ordered a couple different ones, and I put it in there, clamp it down, and what you'll find is it still slides in and out. So, even that doesn't work. So I have not been able to find any off the shelf solution to this. So what I've had to do is I've had to get a little bit of foam rubber. I cut it out. I put it in like this. Then I put the microphone in and then I clamp it in. This is far from an ideal solution. And when we're talking about a $400 audio handle, really Sony should just have an off the shelf solution. So you are going to have a hard time clamping any sort of modern shotgun microphone in here because they are too small or too thin. The other th problem I've got with this is it has a very weak shock mounting system. It just has a little bit of rubber here between the handle. And what I'm finding is if I am a little bit rough with the camera or I'm moving the camera or repositioning my hands, I am getting that sound coming through into the microphone. 
So in a lot of cases, if you're sort of mounting it in this port, you're still not going to get good quality audio. You're really going to have to mic up somewhere else. Once again, this is a less than ideal setup for a $400 audio handle. The other thing you have to be aware of and watch out for is we've got this on off switch on the SWAT side of the audio handle. When it's switched to off, it just means it's going to use the audio coming out of the FX30 at the internal microphone or anything plugged into the microphone port in the camera. When you turn it on, this is going to tell the camera that we're using the audio out of the FX30. If you accidentally leave this on and you're just using the audio handle as a handle and you're just gonna be using the microphone in the camera for sort of scratch audio, what you're gonna find is you're not gonna get any audio at all. And the only warning you're gonna get is your audio meters. Now, the problem I have with this is often I will use the in-camera mics just to get that scratch audio for syncing and editing. So I don't really actually worry about the levels too much. So I don't pay attention to what levels I'm getting because I'm only going to use that audio for syncing. But I've shot a few times like this and I have left that in the on position and I've had no audio to sync, which made syncing very, very difficult. Now, this is still user error and this is still my problem, but it would be nice if there was a little bit more of a noticeable warning that you have left this on the audio handle and that the camera is not getting any audio whatsoever. Once again, if you check the levels, it is fine, but it's just something to be aware of and a little quirk that's caught me out a couple of times. I think the other thing that you're not seeing anybody talk about, but which is a pretty big deal, is that this audio handle sucks battery life out of the FX30. Now the FX30 is rated to about 90 minutes or an hour and a half on the standard 1080p 8-bit footage rating, which is the way they rate all these cameras for whatever reason. When you're shooting in 4K 422, which is the way I shoot, I'm actually finding that I'm getting sort of somewhere around an hour or so. But then I hook up the audio handle that in general is probably knocking down anywhere between 30 and 40% of the battery life. Now I'm getting a very, very poor battery life performance out of the FX30. So just be aware, if you're using the audio handle, you're going to need more batteries. Now, I have found a solution to the battery thing. The Sony batteries are super expensive, but I've sort of ordered a whole bunch on Amazon and gone through and tested them, and I've found the ones that I think operate the best in the FX30 and the A7 IV. They cost about 20% of the price of the genuine Sony batteries. You get them in a kit of two with a charger. And um, anyways, I'll link those in the description down below, but that's what I'm running in all my cameras right now. I've got the two genuine batteries, then I got a bag full of these third-party batteries. So it is solvable, or you can run, you know, extra power supply or a V-mount battery into the camera, but it's something I don't hear people talk about. This handle does suck battery life out of the FX30. And I think if all of this wasn't enough, the quality of the audio coming out of the audio handle compared to a standalone recorder like the Zoom F3 is night and day. The amount of amp hiss and background noise you get out of the audio handle in a number of different situations is pretty bad. And I think in most situations, I would not want to use this as my primary audio source. Where that Zoom F3, which is, um, well, currently I found it on sale. It's, I think it's around $300 or so, $100 less than the audio handle bought in the kit. It's got 32-bit float, which means you don't have to set the levels. You'll never set them too high, never set them too low. You basically have unlimited dynamic range. In addition to that, it has a very, very low noise floor. And I'll just take you through the test I did to establish this so you can kind of see the difference between the audio quality you're gonna get out of the audio handle out of something like the Zoom F3. But then I will circle back because I have found a couple of solutions to that issue. And actually I've got the audio handle uh, with a little bit of a hack performing on par with the Zoom F3 as far as the audio goes. Now you're listening to the Shure SM7B running into the audio handle of the FX30. Now this is a setup you might use for sort of podcasting. You could have a couple of people set up with a couple of SM7Bs or you could use it for live streaming. It's certainly not something you're gonna be running and gunning with, but it is a real world scenario that you might use that's running this SM7B into the audio handle. It's also the most challenging thing that you will probably ever put this audio handle through. And what you're going to find is it doesn't really stand up very well. There really is a lot of background noise and amp hiss, 
when using this microphone. So I'll just leave a little bit of silence here so you can hear that background noise. Now you listen to the SM7B running into the Zoom F3 audio recorder. This is a 32-bit float audio recorder, which means that you don't even have to set the levels in the recorder. Unlike the audio handle, where you have to set the levels right, you have to set them high enough that you don't get too much of that background hiss when you sort of boost up that audio and editing, and you don't want to set it too high because you'll get distortion and clipping. With this one, it has a dynamic range because of the 32-bit float, which is essentially unlimited in practical terms and it means that you don't even have to set the audio levels it just records and when you're done in editing you can set it to whatever you want and we're going to see a significant difference in that background noise and amp hiss so I'm just gonna leave a little pause here so you can hear that background noise Now you're listening to the MKH-50 run into the audio handle of the FX-30. I've got the microphone boom just out of shot. Now this is a condenser microphone that requires 48 volt phantom power. And this type of microphone is going to be a little bit less sensitive to those poor quality amps that we've got in the Sony handle. So I think we will hear a difference still but I don't think it'll be anywhere near as extreme as we're getting with the SM7B. So I'll just leave a little bit of a pause here. Now you listen to the Sennheiser MKH-50 running into the Zoom F3 audio recorder. And while I don't think that this setup is going to expose those poor quality preamps in the Sony handle in quite the same way that that SM7B did, I think we are still going to hear a difference. So I'm just gonna leave a little bit of a pause here so we can test that background amp hiss. All right, as you can see, there was quite a big difference. Obviously, there's a much bigger difference in the dynamic microphone, the SM7B, that requires all that gain. There is less of a difference with the MKH-50, which is a condenser microphone that requires the 48 volt phantom power. Typically, what happens there is Condenser microphones have their own noise floor, which actually often eclipses that of the amps in a handle like this. But what you will find is there was still quite a noticeable difference. Not as much as I think it was in the SM7B, but still a noticeable difference. Now, I said I've got a couple solutions to the problems this audio handle presents us with. Now, the first ones. When we compare the Zoom F3 to the audio handle, one of the huge advantages of that Zoom F3 is you've got 32-bit float recording. That means that you can't set your audio levels too high or too low. You don't even have to set them at all, and you will always get perfectly clean audio. With the audio handle, if you set them too high, you'll get clipping and distortion. If you set them too low, it means you're gonna boost your gain in editing, and you're gonna get more and more of that amp hiss. If you are only using one XLR input or one XLR microphone to record to the audio handle into the FX30, you do have the ability to set up one channel at one level that you think might be right, maybe 12 decibels below what you think is peak, but then you can set up the other one as a backup track lower. This is still not as good as 32-bit float audio recording but it does give you some more flexibility and it does mean that you can pick the one that turns out the best. So that's my first suggestion. That is one way to overcome the huge advantage of that 32-bit float audio recording. The second solution I've got is to deal with the poor quality preamps in the audio handle for the FX30. This is what's giving us the background noise and amp hiss. And what I've done is I've inserted an inline preamp between the microphone and the audio handle. What that does is that boosts the signal of that microphone before it goes into the audio handle. This means that I can turn down the gain on the audio handle and we get less of the background noise and preamp hiss. And what you're gonna find is by using this, I'm actually getting a performance that is almost identical as far as that background noise and amp hiss goes to the Zoom F3 recorder. So I think this is a huge win. Now, what you need to know, first of all, uh, I tested a number of these. The best one I found was a little under $100, around $100, something like that. 
If you are using a dynamic microphone, you have to get one model of these inline preamps. If you're using a condenser like a typical shotgun microphone, like something like this, you're going to have to use a different model. So I will link the two different knot models below. These are the ones that I've tested and I guarantee work really, really well with this setup. All right, here's the example with the inline preamp using the SM7B as our microphone. Now you listen to the SM7B going into the audio handle of the FX30, but now I've put an inline preamp or an inline amplifier in the stream. Now, this is just a little device that can stick either to the end of the microphone or into the handle itself. And this increases the strength or boosts the strength of the signal coming out of the microphone before it gets to the Sony handle and has to use those preamps to sort of amplify the signal. This means that we are getting less background noise and amp hiss. We are getting a much cleaner signal and overall we're getting far better audio quality. Now I'm just gonna leave a little pause here so you can hear the difference. Now, as you can see, the inline preamps made a huge difference. So if you already have the audio handle, I think it is well worth getting an inline preamp. Like I said, there are two different models. One is for dynamic microphones like the SM7B or any of those microphones that you'd be using for podcasts. The other one is for shotgun microphones. And the difference is the shotgun microphones need 48 volt phantom power to operate. And so that little inline preamp has to pass that along to the microphone. So I will link which is for which in the description down below. Now, if you haven't already bought the audio handle, then the question is, is there any reason you would get the audio handle? And I think there is one. And that is, you don't end up having a separate audio track to sync in editing. So if the most important thing to you is speed, that is getting your projects done as quickly as possible, and the highest audio quality or the robust 32-bit float that you get out of a separate 32-bit float audio recorder aren't as important, then I would go with the audio handle. And for me, that is the single reason I bought this audio handle because for making YouTube videos like this, turning videos over quickly is more important than ultimate audio quality. Now I've got a whole series of videos coming up on the FX30, which is a great little cinema camera. And if you don't wanna miss out on any of those, be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell notification.